Hey, what's up guys? Imran here with Monster Gadgets and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you are not, please consider subscribing. I do a lot of videos on videography and photography tutorials. I do some vlogs, some unboxing and reviews of different products and things like that. So you don't want to miss out, so go ahead and subscribe to my channel at this point. I'll, I'll go ahead and wait. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Just down below, just hit the red button. Yep. Oh, and hit the little bell notification too. Just go ahead and tap that. All right, wonderful. Now that we've got that out of the way, this video we're talking about what we can do for utilizing frame rates in post-production. In the last video, about a week ago or so, I'll go ahead and link it here. We talked about which frame rates you should utilize for different situations. But this particular video, we're gonna see how you can combine all the different frame rates you utilized into one video that's gonna be professional and cinematic and it's gonna look super, super smooth and crisp. So let's get into Adobe Premiere and I'll show you how to do that. All right guys, so we are currently in Adobe Premiere and what I did was I already have the three clips that I'm gonna be working on imported into my project. So as you can see, we've got 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, and 24 frames per second. So I've got three different frame rates that we're gonna be working with. And uh, I'm gonna show you first, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the 24 frames per second video onto our timeline and show you how this looks with the three frame rates on the same timeline as they don't match up. So for the sake of this clip right here, I'm just gonna quickly trim it. So I'm gonna hit C for the cut tool. I'm just gonna trim it there, hit V to get the arrow back and delete the rest of my clip. And then we'll go ahead and import our 60 frames per second. And then we'll go ahead and import our 120 frame rates per second. All right, so the first clip here, you're not gonna see any difference in uh, the frames because it's matched for the 24 frames per second. It'll be very smooth. That's the look I was going for and that's exactly what we got. If I move this on to the 120 frame rates per second, actually I'm sorry, this is a 60 frames per second, you'll see how this looks like. A little jittery, a little stuttery. And then if I go into the 120 frame rates per second, you'll see this will be very similar. It'll be more choppy, more stuttery. As you can see. So what basically happens is we've got 120 frames per second and 60 frames per second on a 24 frames per second timeline. So basically, Adobe's trying to figure out how it can match it, and it's basically trying to take out a lot of the frame rates, and that's why it, it's extremely choppy. So let's go ahead and delete these out of here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make all of these the same frame rates. Now, just a quick recap. In my previous video, I talked about how to utilize the proper frame rates based on the setting that you're shooting at. So if you're shooting a subject that you're interviewing or you wanna be able to sync the audio to the video, you always wanna shoot at 24 frames per second. Because what's gonna happen is if you shoot at 60 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 120 frames per second, and you bring it into a 24 frames per second timeline, the audio is not gonna sync well. It's gonna be super slow, it's gonna sound weird, and it's just not gonna work. So make sure you record at the appropriate settings based on the situation that way when you bring it into a timeline of 24 frames per second everything works well for you so if audio syncs in with what you want to sync in and the rest of the clips most likely if you're shooting at 60 or 120 you want those to be slow motion and you won't need audio for it but just be mindful of that so if you have all your clips here if you have a few clips that you are working with you can just simply click and drag and highlight those clips if you've got 25, 50, 100 clips on a project that you want to work on, just go ahead and scroll all the way to the top, select the first one, scroll all the way down towards the bottom, hit shift, and click on the last one, and that'll go ahead and select all of your clips. Once you got them selected, doesn't matter on which one, just go ahead and right click on it, and go to modify, and then go to, oops, intrepid foot. 
interpret footage. Once you click on that, it's going to bring up the modified clip box, and you'll have two settings here. One will be use frame rate from file, which basically means it's going to use individual frame rates per file, which we don't want. We're going to go ahead and click on assume this frame rate. And what this allows us to do is this allows us to set one frame rate that we want all of our clips to be at. So we're going to go ahead and type in 23.976 and we're going to hit OK. And as you can see, that changed all of our clips to one standard frame rate, which is 23.976. That's what we assigned. So let's go ahead and bring these clips in one by one and then you can see how it made a difference. So let me go ahead and back up here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this again for the sake of the length of the video. Yep, that's 60 frames per second originally. Now one thing you'll notice is once you change these frame rates, the higher the frame rate, it does make that clip longer because basically it's slowed it down for us already. So be mindful of that. And then here is our 120 frame rate per second clip. So again, the first one, nothing changed. This is going to work as smooth as it was recorded. So there's going to be no change in this file. So you can see the audio, the same stuff for the video. And that's again what we wanted. So that's good to go. Let's go ahead and fast forward to the 60 frames per second. This is going to be uh, a little bit slower now because it went from 24 frames per second to 60 frames per second, which means it'll make it a bit smoother as well. As you guys can see, huge difference there. And then once you jump into the 120 frame rates per second, this is going to slow down tremendously because we went from 120 frame rates per second to 24 frames, 24 frames per second, and so it's going to slow it down tremendously. The nice thing is, it's going to bring it down to uh, because it's going to bring it down to slow motion. A lot of the shakiness that you might have had in your hand or whatever device you're using, it's going to get rid of that as well. So let's take a look at this one. As you can see, the audio sounds weird. You can definitely delete the audio because we're not going to use that, but in this example, I'm utilizing it. As you can see, it's much, much smoother and obviously much slower because we went from 100 and some frame rates per second to 24 frames per second. All right, so there you guys go. Here's a quick example. I'm sure you guys can see the difference in, in the quality. So again, just make sure that when you're recording, if you want the audio to sync up, always shoot at 24 frames per second. Anything faster than that, make sure you plan your clip when you record it and know that you're going to slow it down. That way you can go ahead and crank up the frames per second. That way when you come into post, it's going to be so much easier for you to get in and go through your workflow and edit the clips as you need. So let's go ahead and jump out of Adobe Premiere now. All right guys, hopefully you found that tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. I would greatly appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll be sure to answer those for you. I greatly appreciate all the love and support. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.